Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Napick. Every week, we talk with interesting people in a variety of professions for ideas to enhance your success in all aspects of life. Successful Living with Bill Napick starts right now. Here's Bill Napick. Welcome to the show. It is Successful Living with Bill Napick. I'm Bill Napick. Today is a special edition as we're going to talk about food again. We love to do that, and we have our good friend, Jonathan Levine. He has two locations. His restaurant is Jonathan's The Rub. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Well, thanks for having me, Bill. I appreciate you uh, spending time with me. And here we are again. Food is so awesome. Your restaurants are just tremendous. And I want to start out as here it is, at, at least at the time of broadcast. We know people listen on the Internet after the fact, after the broadcast. But right now, Sunday afternoon, it's 6 o'clock, right after the news. This show is on. People are driving around. There may be even someone that's out there saying, where am I going to eat? in a few minutes or at seven o'clock after the show, regardless, mm -hmm. your restaurants are easy to, to jump right off the freeways. Let's tell them how to get there in sure. case they get hungry right now. Well, thank you. We have a, uh, rather new location. It's a year and a half. It's on Katy freeway, 9090 Katy freeway on the, on the corner of Campbell on the, on the North corner. So it's easy right on the feeder road big parking area. And then we have another one that's uh, on Memorial Drive, 12505 Memorial Drive. And that's at Memorial Green. It's a midway project that's done beautifully. Really elegance. Nice. Oh yeah. It's, it won uh, architectural awards for its uh, design and flow. So uh, that's the more upscale joint. And then the, the one on, on Campbell and I-10 and I is a little bit more mom and pop-ish, everyday kind of eat place. One of the things I will mention and embellish, either one, you can't go wrong. The food's going to be tremendous. It's going to be great. And again, if you're driving, you want a great spot, you can pull over now and listen to the show later by going to radiobill.net. <laughs> either way works for you, oh, yeah. but the food's going to be good right now, today, Sunday, as they hear the show or any other day. Right, Jonathan? Well, we've been doing it for a lot of years, but I got 30 years of uh, cooking behind the line and, you know, we kind of got it down and uh, we keep improving and keep uh, manipulating the menu to make it better for our, for our guest experience. And that's one of the things too, as far let, let's start with the menu because any restaurant, the restaurants you go to outside of your own, so many things are important. The quality of the food, consistency, the service, however, I think one of the other things is the menu selection. What do you put on the menu? What don't you put on? So let's give people an idea of the cuisine in case they have not been to one of your places. But also let's talk about the thinking that you put in in the team to make sure your menu is successful and how that came about. Because that's, that's not easy, I don't think. No, it's not easy. It's And it's getting more difficult, supply chain issues and especially with our type menu we have we have a uh, an eclectic high end american oriented menu that touches on other ethnic cuisines as well the concept developed many years ago uh, for me was that i wanted everybody that came in to be able to find something that they really liked to eat i didn't want to be pigeonholed oh we were a steakhouse oh we were italian oh we we're you know, uh, deli, stuff like that. So what we did was we combined the elements of many, many different ethnicities with an American flair to make it pal palatable to the general public, extremely high-end ingredients, done beautifully. That's been our mantra for, uh, well, I've been, I've been doing it 30 years now, so that's what we try to do. Very extensive menu, um, a lot of categories and groups we just get it done. And I will say, as far as the selection on recent visits for me, I had the spaghetti and meatballs. Uh -huh. After talking to you last, yeah. I was like, you know, I've had a lot of things yeah. and I'll try spaghetti and meatballs. I had that at Campbell location. Very nice. And of course you have a, a background in Brooklyn and so forth, but you yeah. included that Italian flair on the menu. And then not that long ago at Memorial Green, I had the steak. 
the so. New York strip with a Bernays sauce. Oh, nice. Here we nice. go. If you're getting hungry, yeah, let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I well, love that uh, Bernays sauce, too. Oh, the Bernays sauce. I mean, it's all from scratch f- cooking, and it's it's done right. Our Italian influence comes from my growing up in Brooklyn, New York. I'm not an Italian guy. I'm a Jewish guy from Brooklyn, but when you grow up in Brooklyn, Italian is the first go-to food. So it's like Tex-Mexes and Houston Italian food in New York. So that was my first love of food. So what I've tried to do as a chef was mimic uh, the flavors I, I grew up with. And I think we, we have it down <laughs> 30 years of doing it. So it's just it's just the main familiar uh, Italian food, but it's really Italian American food. So. Well, and I'll tell people you were on, I don't know, a few months ago on the show. So if they want to hear the history of how you started, I think that's fascinating. You did start in the Northeast, Cape Cod. But I'll reference people, again, go to the website, radiobill.net. You'll find Jonathan's interview there, and you can find the extensive story. But let's touch upon that. You had a restaurant. Your first one was in Cape Cod. Right, yeah. Now, this heat in summer, I want to be in Cape Cod <laughs> yeah, I want to be in Cape Cod, too. <laughs> However, I know, it's we're like here a, now. It's 80 degrees. I kind of jumped ship into the into the uh, restaurant business. I always loved uh, cooking. I love. Uh, I always had a natural ability to create good tasting food, just like it's in my DNA. And uh, not, I'm not a chef uh, that was taught at school. I kind of learned it on my own and then um, online and in the internet. So, you know, it's it's uh, real deal food out of my soul. What happened was I was working as, a, uh, after I got my MBA, I was a, a commodity trader in New York, you know, a typical progression in, through life. But I, I decided that I really didn't like that whole world. Too cutthroat for me, uh, too many angry, ugly people involved and um, I had an opportunity to buy a restaurant at Cape Cod. Having gone to school in Boston, it was like, okay, this is a pretty cool thing. And we just jumped ship. Uh, my wife wasn't all that thrilled with the whole move. You know, the rest is kind of history. It's, uh, that was in the early 80s. So it's, uh, it's been a, a lifetime of this. And I want to touch upon the Northeast just for a second, maybe get off food just for a minute and say that I had a short experience in the early 90s, and it was fascinating. I was in Providence, Rhode Island, okay? So, (laughs) and one of the things, I lived right in, it was called, uh, the apartment building was called Center Place, as it indeed was in the center of Providence. Now, I would recommend, if you've not been to Providence, Rhode Island, check it out. It's nice. And, And this place, Jonathan, where I lived, literally across the street was the train station, and and it was modern architecture. It was a new train station, and behind it was the state house. Now you've been to Providence, I'm guessing. A lot. So, so yeah. you're you're picturing yeah. it, and those that have not, maybe you could see this visual picture. But I loved it when it was snowing. I looked out my second floor window, and the snow would come down. There was the state house in front of this modern architecture. It was very beautiful, and I could walk to everything. They had a river walk there that they, they began. And I think there was an Italian restaurant. I remember on Sunday nights walking to that Italian restaurant. I could hear the snow crackle under my shoes, right? You've heard that sound, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, there was an Italian restaurant in the basement. I forget the name of it, but somewhere right there in the heart of it. Yeah. And it was just a, a, a super a beautiful scene. But that yeah. Northeast has so much to offer. I mean, yeah. it's it, it, and, and we learned from those experiences. You brought your experiences from the Northeast right here to Houston. Well, yeah, it's funny you mentioned Providence. Pro- Providence has got great mom and pop Italian places. Um, it's it's where like they have the restaurant in the basement or the restaurant on the first floor. You might have been and to the restaurant. Probably. <laughs> I we spent some time there, and then uh, nobody knows Providence. Providence is a great little town. It's a great town. Brown University is there. Yep. It's a, so you have a college feel to it to some degree, but then you know it would be the typical thing where the restaurants on the first floor. The family lives on the second floor of a three-story brown brownstone, and then the grandma lives somewhere in between. It was it's that type of uh, a thing, and I grew up with that in New York too, in Coney Island, right near where I grew up. It was the same kind of scene. I have to re- recall and mention another memory from up there. I think this is awesome because again, remember 
I could walk to that train station in five minutes from my front door. 20 minutes later, I'm in Boston. And one night, my girlfriend and I went to Boston, did some sightseeing. I think it was a Saturday night. We looked at the bar where they did the outside of the Cheers show. Mm -hmm. But we found another restaurant, just like you said, I remembered it, where it had the basement restaurant or a bar or pub and then a restaurant upstairs. Now, the, the moral of this story is... I didn't know how important or how really good wine tasted until this night. And this is back in the 90s. So we go into this. There's a jazz trio. And we're in the restaurant. And I don't know why, but my girlfriend at that time said, I'll buy dinner. I said, well, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so she picks up the tab. But as we're ordering, she went right to the most expensive bottle of wine. Now, they had a cap. I think at that time it was a $60 bottle of wine. It was Opus One. Okay, remember wow. the prices now. Wow. Opus One is not $60 today, I don't no. think. I can't afford it. But we get the Opus One, and she orders it. She goes, oh, we'll have this one. I'm like, oh, that's great. Now, right off the bat, the, the, the servers saw that she picked that wine, and every, they were getting excited about it because <laughs> they knew the flavor that this particular wine could deliver. And that was all of a sudden I knew that more expensive wine, at least in this case, tastes a lot better. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah, there were great inexpensive wines as well, but you nailed it with Opus One. I, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a classic, beautiful wine, beautiful wine. And we yeah. went to the Napa Valley and went to the to that vineyard. You? Have you seen that? No, I haven't made it oh. out to Napa Valley. I... Well, that particular vineyard, the Mandavi Opus One vineyard, is totally different. It was in an Architectural Digest spread many years ago. But when you go there, everything about it architecturally, the door handles, you have to have an appointment. Anyway, it's fantastic. I guess it's still there. That was many years ago. Nice. And you have wine at your restaurants, huh? Oh, yeah. The, That's a big I, part. I, yeah, but at Memorial Drive, my daughter, uh, Jessica, handles the uh, the wine menu, um, keeps changing, a lot of upscale, a lot of uh, affordable wines. Also, we have canister wines. Now, people... Like, oh, it's canister wine. Well, guess what? Now, what does that mean, canister well, wine? Well, canister wine is it's a big four-gallon, I think it's four gallons of wine that that's, comes out of a tap. Like a keg? Yeah, it's like, it's okay. like a, a keg. I don't know. And no. um, it's kept either chilled or at the right temperature for uh, red wine. I think it's 52 degrees. So we have two refrigerators uh, underneath. and and um, But it's, it's top-end top end wines that are uh, less expensive for us and less expensive for the customer because of the packaging. You're not bottling each one, putting a cork in each one. You have, you know, it's a it's a pour of four gallons of wine in a canister. So there's ec this uh, economy there. And we, we, we run that at uh, happy hour and it's available uh, at all meals also. And um, it's uh, some righteous stuff, Bill. I, it's all... <laughs> Well, the nice. night I had at your restaurant, Jonathan's The Rub Memorial Green, that night I was there. Again, I just like saying I had the New York Strip because it yeah, makes me no. think of the flavor. And the Bernays sauce and some other and crab cakes. Yeah. But the wine that was suggested, I think it was called Scout. Oh, the, 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 Scout's the, Honor. The server yeah. said, well, it's, try this one. And, and it it's was a, it's, fantastic. It's a... It's called Scouts Honor, cab, right? Yeah, Scouts Honor. It's a cab blend, and uh, for me, I'm not a, really a big wine drinker. I'm not a big drinker at all, but it is absolutely delicious. It's, I hate to say it, but there's a little sweet edge to it that just makes it so pal palatable. It's beautiful. We have we have one couple, Tom and Mar Marilyn, come in Monday nights. They live at Memorial Green, right behind the. And we, Beautiful you know, homes there, we, yeah. we, we, we uh, get the bottle open when we see them walking, you know, towards the restaurant. That's, <laughs> that's all Tom's going to order. So, so you, are, you already know. Well, speaking of wine, we haven't talked about wine on the, uh, on the, the show, but that is, I guess, a big part. How, how do you know what are the right wines? In this case, I guess people give you ideas or you know what they like, but how do you know which, sure. which wines to have on the uh, menu? Uh, menu? Yeah, we, we um, when we first opened um, Memorial, we had some uh, real wine experts help us. Shepard Ross, who's a great uh, restaurateur and wine, wine uh, he should be Islam, but he's a good friend. And he put together our, our first list. 
and then we tweaked it and edited, and then we went with that, and um, it was successful. But the, it's it's trial and error to you know. So you eliminate the slow sellers, you bring on other wines that have maybe of interest, and then you you tweak your your uh, wine list that way. And it's really a numbers game. You know, for me, that's what I do is I. I look at what's selling and what's not selling, and if it's slow, we pull it off. And then Jesse, will, my daughter, will pick out a new wines, and we'll see how that goes. And so it's a, it's a constant flow, and we try to get wines that fit our profile and in terms of dollar dollars and flavors. And um, that's how it. That's the the science of it. Really, it's just it's very it's very similar to when you run specials for food. Uh, where, you know, you see what's, what hits and what doesn't hit, and you take your slow sellers from the dinner menu or and you remove them and you put specials that sell well, and that's how the, uh, it, everything matriculates. That's how. As we're talking about drink in the restaurant, I always wondered what is the most popular mixed drink? Now, does that vary from mm. one of your locations to the Memorial Green? No, but what, what, what are the, um, say, the top two mixed well, drinks that people you know, want? It's, it's amazing what's happening now. It's like classic old-fashioned is we have a, uh, a JTR blend that we that we do it, and it's it's um, really, really popular. It's, it's a, it's a, you know, it stands the test of time. It's sort of faded out, and now... The original people that that always order old fashions order it, and now the more millennial or Generation Z order order Manhattan's too. That's that's the, the top cocktail, but as a as a uh, alcohol, it's always it's vodka, 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 vodka. Tequila's up there too, but vodka in every which way and configuration that we do it is the number one seller from. Uh, you know, from our commercial uh, standpoint. Very interesting. As far, okay, let's take soft drinks. What what soda is the most popular? <laughs> well, <laughs> a cola, well, thank, I'm guessing. Thank, <laughs> thank you for that because uh, my drink of choice is uh, Diet Coke, there you which go. is unfortunate. But uh, uh, I, I tried Coke Zero uh, for a while, but I, I went back to Diet Coke, by far the, the, mo- the most, you know, consumed Soft drink. And then there's a bottle of waters. I mean, uh, it's such a thing. Bottle of water, either you know, sparkling or not sparkling. They, are, Well, now the consumption is way up because everybody's parched. and uh, Well, it's been so water. hot here, yeah. yeah so. It's hard to beat just yeah. a good glass of water right there. It's amazing how I'm, I'm sorry. It's amazing how many different waters there are. And the taste profiles are so different from one to the other to the other. People don't get it. Well, so at your restaurants, then, how many different bottle we, waters we, do you serve? We, we don't, what are the choices? We, we, we kind of narrow, narrow it down. We have um, uh, Aqua Penner is our, our, our non-sparkling. I mean, we have a couple others that we keep rotating to see if they'll, they have any uh, legs, we call it, if they're going to stick onto the menu. But Aqua Penner, it's an Italian... Um, flat water and it's uh it's delicious and then uh the sparkling is uh topo chico has taken over the world (laughs) it's uh it's really good it's tasty yeah it's tasty so it's um i don't know the higher salt content and uh minerals is just it's number one by far it's just we don't even need to carry uh, uh pellegrino anymore or uh it's Topo Chico. Yeah, yeah, it's all Topo Chico. Yeah. We're talking with Jonathan Levine right here in Houston, Texas, the fourth largest city in, in the United States, they say. <laughs> Jonathan's restaurants, it's called Jonathan's The Rub, Memorial Green, Campbell right off of I-10, super restaurants. Now, one of the things that, that I'm thinking of right now as we talk about waters, the different wines, there are challenges to running a restaurant, but there's a lot of fun, I imagine. I never never had a restaurant, but if I were you, and I'm picturing myself as you, one of the fun things, I it's also like an experimentation laboratory in mm. that whether, when we're going to talk about food very soon, but just with the waters, it must be fun to sit back and say, all right, I'm going to put this on the menu. 
Let's see how that does. Oh, all of a sudden, almost like a horse race. Which one is getting ahead of the yeah. pack? And then also, I'm guessing there's trends like maybe one month or one season. This is leading, and then here comes something else. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that laboratory aspect of any business, but certainly the restaurant, to see how people react to the offerings, I think that's fantastic. Mm. Do you have fun yeah. with that, Jonathan? Oh, my God. I mean, the tasting is the fun, too. Um, exactly. You know, we'll line up different waters. Uh, we'll line up certainly different wines. I mean, you know, when the when the wine guys come in to uh, try to sell us stuff and we lay out five, five or six different types, um, it's, it's, it's okay for Jesse and I don't really drink wine, but we'll taste it. We know flavor. Uh, so the whole scene, you know, we're going through the wine tasting. It's, you know, and you're running it through your mouth and you're, and you're trying to understand it. It's just so much fun. It's just so much fun. And you mentioned Jesse. Now I've had great conversations. We need to get her on the show sometimes, but yeah, just she's in busy the thing. restaurant, she is a delight to talk to and super passionate about food, the restaurants, and everything else. So she really brings a lot to the to the program there at Memorial Green and uh, is fascinating to speak with about yeah. the restaurant and food. Uh, Your daughter, Jessica. Yeah, my daughter, my daughter Jessica. Uh, I call her Jessie, obviously. Um, she's been in the restaurant business really since she's 14 years old. In between going to school and college and all that, she'd work for us. Or uh, We also sent her out to work for the competition. She works for... Landry, she worked for Pappas, just to try to get uh, to see, understand how their systems work and how they operate. And then she came back to us with all the all the nitty gritty spy information that we can get. I mean, those guys, you know, Pappas family is great friends of ours, so um, there's no animosity there at all. Uh, stealing, we don't steal; we're just getting ideas. So, so she was she's great at the front of the house organization, bringing bringing in stuff that are the, are the nuts and bolts of keeping a restaurant organized properly. She's great at that, much better than I am. So she's taken over that realm. I'm more of the theoretical, I'm flavors, I'm food, I'm, you know, looking for the next trend. I'm, I'm not looking at other restaurants. I'm uh, doing, and I'm, I'm in charge of the catering operation. So she's, she's the restaurant lady. My son Sam uh, kind of adopts Jesse's uh, programs. And then we're, you know, we have a really great organizational, uh, chart right now for every aspect of it. So, but Jesse also is, uh, involved more with food and the tasting. Uh, she gets on me. Um, we just had this thing about the salad dressings. I mean, it's like, this is a big deal because we have our own recipes and then you leave it up to one of your prep cooks to put it together. And, they, and then there's the whoops factor that happens. So she tastes, before we go out, she tastes the house dressing, which is like, it's got to be right. So I get the call yesterday at 9.15 in the morning, Dad, come and check the house dressing. It's wrong. It's like, whoa. She's like laying in. Hold the presses. <laughs> yeah, it's hold the presses. So I, got, I, run, I run over there, and um, first I printed out the menu. Sometimes we tweak menus and we forget to tell them or something like that. Well, the menus were the same. The recipes were the same, I mean, the recipes. And uh, it's just one of them slipped up. So we have to dump that whole load and start all over and do our house dressing because we're not going to let it – we're not going to sell it. No, we it's got to be right. Do that. Exactly. It's got to be right. Well, uh, speaking of salads, you're, one of one of my favorite things is, and, and I had this at Memorial Green, is the Caesar salad. And the thing that's great about that is the croutons. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. tell <laughs> us about yeah. the secret croutons. Yeah. I mean, that right in uh, itself. What is uh, it? A sourdough or what? Yeah, it's delicious. I think, I think we talked about it last time a little bit. I don't give too many people. I didn't use used to give the secret out, but. So what happened was um, when we first opened up, we didn't really have the time. Uh, we had a small place, so we bought croutons, store-bought croutons. And I was like, oh, man, this is not going to work. So fortunately, the ones that we, we ordered were out, so we didn't have them. So what I did was I took our sweet sourdough burger buns, and I cut them to crouton size, and then I uh, fried them in peanut oil, and then I added Parmesan Reggiano, Pecorino Romano, mm. and Herbe de Provence. And that's been the crouton for 
15 years, and people come in just to buy croutons. So, so I'm not the only one that says, hey, you ought to try – I was with my buddy. I said, you ought to try yeah, the Caesar salad. Yeah. You'll love the croutons. And the right. salad, I mean, the salad and the dressing is fantastic. Yeah, the, but Well, the dressings are all homemade. I mean, it's – when you you know, you, you, you know, when you're starting from scratch – when you're, you know, when you're making your mayonnaise from scratch, it's all, it's all beautiful. I mean, it's same day. I mean, it's, it's incredible. We're talking with Jonathan Levine. Jonathan's the rub. We're going to take a quick break. Stay with us, please. As we continue, Jonathan Levine's with us. Jonathan's the rub. He has two restaurants right here in Houston, Texas. Jonathan, we were talking about all kinds of things. Let's talk about recently at your memorial green you were helping the ukraine let's tell people number one what were you doing to help what were the results and then where do we go from there oh well thanks so much it's it's something obviously important in fact we mentioned it on the show too i I hope at least we got a couple extras (laughs) attending yeah well good it's tragedy uh in progress right now what's going on uh in ukraine unprovoked uh invasion and um, the killing is uh, only increased since uh, February 24th uh, when it started. And uh, I have uh, Ukrainian blood in me, and um, we're Eastern European people. So what we decided to do on uh, June 7th on, uh, on a Tuesday night is we had a dinner fundraiser at the Memorial Green location um, and the, um, the monies that we raised were to go to buy uh, cargo vans that would hold medical supplies and uh, food and um, equipment. So we were able to, after that night, it was rather successful. We were able to buy three Ford Transit cargo vans uh, in uh, Warsaw, Poland. And uh, from Poland, they were transported to leave which is the western, uh, second largest city in the country. It's on the western frontier, so it's far away from the the heavy action in Donbass uh, on the east. So the uh, the vans are in use now, transporting whatever has to get transported throughout the country. And they're going to come back to uh, Warsaw to uh, get filled up again and brought back again, and then a lot of internals. So that that's, you know... If we save a life or we feed some people or we take care of somebody's grandmother, it's, it's just a, this is what we can do. This is, it's just worked out really well and we're thrilled with it so far. We, you know, we're a small group and to do anything was just great. So now what we're doing is we're continuing with that uh, through August, from August 1st through Labor Day, we're doing Jonathan's Drive for Ukraine and we're going to um, donate uh, monies from a special Ukraine menu. It's it's American food. There's no Ukrainian food, but I don't think we'd sell too much Ukrainian food uh, here in Houston. Uh, some we have a little couple of things going on, but so um, we're going to um, raise money uh, through August, and then we're going through a company or an agency called Dar Charitable Foundation. They're here in Houston, actually in Piney Point. And it's a Ukrainian family that takes no money uh, for service fees, and they just uh, administer uh, the monies. Uh, the monies went to them, and then 100% of that money went to uh, Ford in Warsaw, Poland. And um, so every single cent that was raised went to buy the vans, plain and simple. There's no other fees. There's nobody getting paid outside the organization. So, you know, that was very, very important to me. I just didn't want money being put aside for other reasons. I just wanted hundred percent of the donations to go to the vans. So that's what we did. We have three vans now in operation and hopefully we'll do three more uh, by the end of August. So the, the, I think it's interesting to note the three vans that you've already purchased were the result of one night is that right? Yes, one one, one night, fundraiser that one you fun, had in June. Night. You were able to buy three vans for the people in yeah. the Ukraine. That's, and, that's yeah, pretty and, successful. Yeah, and we have some money left over to buy the the next one. We just don't have enough to buy a whole van right now. It's almost there, 
but we'll we'll definitely be able to raise uh, more funds to get three more vans uh, through the by the end of August. And then we'll see what goes on from there. We have other plans to do more fundraisers in the fall as well. We're just going to keep it going as long as we can. Well, if you're that successful with one night and you're starting this menu August 1st, you should really be able to help if you're going to run it the whole month, right? Yeah. And it's going to be at both uh, locations, Memorial Green. Both locations, Memorial Green and Campbell. They're really exceptional menus where there's great value. You know, I'm I'm at the point, I don't really care if we make a dime off the meals that we sell. That's not really the goal right now. The goal is to get as much money as we can to purchase these vans and get them in use in Ukraine. And give people an idea. So that means when they go to your restaurants for lunch or dinner in August, mm-hmm. starting August 1st, which at the time of broadcast is tomorrow. So that means when I come into the restaurant, I'm going to get your regular menu and then one that is benefiting the Ukraine efforts that you're exactly. doing. It's a, it's a three-course menu uh, for brunch, lunch, and dinner. You can start off with this eight or nine appetizers that are part, part of it. Then you get your entree and then a dessert. And it's $25 for the lunch or the brunch, and it's $50 for the dinner. And uh, dinners include Chilean sea bass, filet mm. mignon. Um, I'm there. On and on and on. <laughs> so it's, 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 not, it's, it's not just a, an abbreviated menu where we're trying to, you know, shortcut things or profit from it. We're, we want to give uh, incentive for people to come in the door so we can donate monies for Ukraine. You know, people want to buy wine. People want to buy uh, alcohol. You know, that's fine. And we'll, you know, I can, we'll pay our help and get, take care of our expenses that way. It's not the emphasis right now. The emphasis is on um, taking care of uh, the Ukrainians. That's where my heart lies. And that's what we're doing. So that sounds like a great thing. So there you go. As you're listening, August 1st, all August, all seating times, all dinners and brunches. And let's talk, uh, we want to get to the some of the entrees too. But as we you mentioned brunch a couple times now, people may forget that you have brunch. You're serving eggs Saturdays and Sundays. I, ha- I had a, I think the, the Benedict, I forget, but yeah. I had a breakfast there. We have a bunch of Benedicts, yeah. Yeah, on a, on a Saturday I had a good lunch or a good brunch there. So let's tell people about the brunch menu that maybe a lot of people that go there for go to your place for lunch or dinner may forget that you have that brunch on the weekends so 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 brunch is really big for sunday at at the memorial green we started it uh, almost two years ago and it's been uh, uh, extremely successful uh since then it's got an extensive uh traditional brunch menu starting with all your different egg dishes and waffles and pancakes and sausage bacon Mm. and and then it goes on to salads and burgers and steaks. So all that is available at Memorial Green on Sundays. What we do at the Campbell Place is we have a limited menu Saturday and Sunday right now. It's still a new restaurant. We're still trying to hash things out. So we have about 10 items on our brunch menu for Saturdays and Sundays at Campbell Place. And then hopefully... Uh, after Labor Day, we'll go to a full-fledged brunch menu. But it's you have to get into these things slowly because its uh, production is more is is intense. So you know we want to get it right right off the bat. And then on Saturdays, also at Memorial Green, we'll have an abbreviated uh, brunch menu also with the Benedicts. We have this Denver uh, Benedict, which is. Oh, it's just, it's like, <laughs> it's slow, slow roasted. I like when you get excited about yeah, your own food because I'm making a note. That's what I want to order when I go back. You want to do if that. Jonathan likes it, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> you know, you got, it's slow roasted beef. Uh, oh, and yes. then yeah, And then it's with egg and, and the hollandaise on top. It says. It's okay, just, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to go there as one of the lunch items. It's. And I don't know what you call it on the menu. I forget, but it's like a pot roast. It's the, what right. do you call it? The Denver <laughs> pot roast. Yeah, or, Denver roast. Or so you could get that in the form of the roast by itself. Also at lunch, you could get it on bread. Uh, yeah, one of your specials. Yeah, that is 
tremendous. And you it's, said, I guess the secret right there, one of is a slow roasting when yeah. you make that. Yeah, it's That's it's killer. And you incorporate that in the brunch. I would take on the traditional pot roast, except we don't use brisket or chuck roast. We we kind of step it up and use um, a higher grade of meat, brown it first, and then it goes into like a bourguignon sauce. Really, is what it is. So it's red wine based beef beef stock and it's with carrots, onion, celery, garlic, herbs of Provence. Oh my God! I love when the carrot makes its appearance oh, on my plate, yeah, I, it, it, and yeah. it's not often. That's one of the reasons I appreciate the the Denver roast so much is when the carrots there, accompanied with the beef and that sauce, it, yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. It's it's comfort food for sure. Now I want to mention this. You probably have already figured this out. However, as we talk about the Ukraine and how you're helping them, you've already done so in a massive way with just one night. All August, you're going to be helping people. Anybody eating a Jonathan's The Rub, either location, you have the opportunity to help the Ukraine. But I'm going to tell you this, Jonathan, of course, this goes on the Internet. So if anyone's in the Ukraine and they want to hear this show, all they have to do is go to the YouTube channel. So you could tell your partners over wow. there that we're, you're talking about them and they could hear what we're saying. How about that? Wow, that's, that's the great. beauty. That's you think great. about it. Well, one of the people uh, involved, the it's the Blazer family, and they still uh, have uh, operations. They're in agricultural machinery and agriculture still in Ukraine, and they have over 2,000 workers still there. So we'll have them tune in as well and uh, so they know that we're supporting them. That would be a great idea. Absolutely. When I get that link up on YouTube, and by the way, those of you that want to see the show as we're talking here, radiobill.net and of course you can see past shows as well you can see the show jonathan was on a few months ago where we talked about his story in a little bit more detail so all kinds of great things are there at radiobill.net and by the way websites jonathan let's tell people your website for your restaurants because part of the fun when i go to your restaurant is i i look online first to get my restaurant strategy before i get there <laughs> what's your website well it's jonathan's the rub.com and um we have uh, the menus for both restaurants there. We tell some stories about the family. It's all, you know, it's all about family with us. It's my, as we said earlier, my son's at Campbell and my daughter's at at Memorial, and um, they they uh, they run the places. So we give um, a little bit of story, history, background, and then um, the menus, and we also talk about. The catering company, which has been around actually longer than the restaurants, and uh, we're coming into catering season uh, when everybody comes back in school. We do we do corporate events, and uh, we do events in the restaurants and in people's homes all throughout Houston, but mostly in in Memorial Tangle and Tanglewood areas. So we we do corporate events in people's homes or just family gatherings also with servers and waiters and bartenders and all come into your home and, and we cook live. I come in um, upon request and uh, we cook right there. So that's a whole nother. Let's uh, take a, let's break thing. that down a little bit. Let's say somebody that has not had this experience in any of the neighborhoods you mentioned or, or wherever, let's take that something close to the Memorial area. They say, I heard you're on the show or I heard about your catering and we're going to have 20 people over to the house on a Sunday or whenever. We're going to have 20 people over to the house. Jonathan, we want you to cater it and bring your team and I guess all your cooking, you tend all that. So what happens then? We make the, the, the arrangement, work out the menu, right? So what yeah, happens? The, the, How does that work? The, the menu Sounds is, like fun. Yeah, it's it's been around a long time and it's, it works really well. It's at the point now where people just call us up and tell us when to show up. Or they so, say, "Let's do it again." Yeah, You're in. You have their yeah. menu already on yeah. file. Yeah. So, <laughs> so typically, with we we uh, we don't have a pre-printed menu where you got to pick from column A and column B. Right. We could do want. we could do over 300 dishes. So we just let it rip. We I sit down with the client and we put a menu together and um, see what they want for service. Do they want buffet? Do they want sit down dinner? We do it all. We have chefs that come in. We have servers that come in, bartenders that come in. We set the whole thing up. We have ovens. We have grills. We have everything we could set up outside. We can, you can keep all the mess outside, and we'll come in and serve, serve dinner for anywhere from 
eight or ten people to three hundred. We do uh, a lot of work for, um, pardon me for mentioning it, for CBRE, the, and um, they have parties, family parties, and they have corporate parties. So we've done little ones and and big parties for the, for them as well. Three hundred. Now, I mean, okay. First of all, let's take the smaller version. Let's say it's twenty people, and I'm picturing this. So if I enlist your services for the 20 people that are going to be at my house, I don't have to do anything but enjoy the courses that come out. <laughs> you bring in the food, you take away the dishes, right? Is that right? right? We have we have tables and chairs. We have high top tables so people could have their cocktails. We have tables and chairs for them to to set up if they want to augment what they have. You don't do anything. We Except come in. Enjoy the food. We come in, we set the whole thing up serve and then we clean up and get out of there it's like you never had a party so you <laughs> so, wake up the next morning and you go have your morning coffee and you don't even know you had a party in your house the, the la- last night except that you have the memory of the flavors <laughs> and the fun that right oh, and you're the good. fun I that, like and that. the fun yeah. that that's right yeah. so it's yeah. like you come in you build the memories and and and, well. and just think about it food as we all know it we associate certain memories it's so important. We c- I can remember certain flavors from years ago. <laughs> Some that, like I go back to the story about that bottle of wine in, in Boston. Yeah. Decades yeah. ago. Opus something, One, yeah. yeah something yeah. just clicked back then. So we're building memories, and you're providing that for people. But let's <laughs> let's hit the 300. Now, when you have a this kind of operation on a massive level, and it's a party for 300, that's got to incorporate some extra skills, the extra consistency the being able to bring food out at the right temperature for that amount of dinners. I mean, what's that like? You know, it sounds like it's um, extremely difficult to pull off. It's easy for you. But um, it's just a question of scale. We ha- If you have the equipment and you have the personnel, it's, it's uh, somewhat more cumbersome in moving all your gear. But that's really the only difference. We know how to keep food hot. We know how to serve it to that many people. We know how many servers we need, how many bartenders we need. It's uh, it's actually a lot more fun for us, too. It's an exciting night, a real exciting night. Like 300 people, oh, my God. But it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a chore to get all the food out and get it right, but it's not as crazy as you might think. Well, so. you've done it before, so that's part of what, well, yeah, what we're enlisting we got, is the experience of yeah, someone like well, yourself yeah. and the team. I, lo- I love what you brought up about, um, and I didn't even think of it, about the memories. That's, oh. I mean, because us, you know, we're all about, I mean, we're in the hospitality business. It's a people business. Yeah, it's a people business. And and if people have fun and they have memories, it's like that's that's the it. You know, that's, that's, a, that's, the, uh, that's the focus. You know how can we how can we take care of people who are the in the in the restaurants or in the catering jobs? It's you know how can they enjoy a specific time on this planet and you know have fun for an hour, two hours, whatever it is, three hours, you know, for that period of time. That's right. It's and beautiful. It, it begins also when we take it at the restaurant. When we go into your restaurant, it begins or any restaurant. It begins at the moment you walk in. How are you greeted, right? right. What's the atmosphere right. that we that the person or, or group yeah, walks that's... into right there? The experience begins at that moment, and you and other restaurateurs have, and, and, and teams have the opportunity to make it awesome. I mean, that's that's certainly the uh, objective, uh, how to make it awesome, how to, you know, make them feel special as soon as they walk in the door, and then you know, nurture it throughout the whole dinner, through dessert, and say goodbye. How many times do you go to a restaurant, this kind of blows my mind, and you're about to leave, and you just get up from your table, and you walk out the front door, and nobody from that restaurant says goodbye. You know, I'm, I don't, maybe I'm too old-fashioned, but... It's very important. Hello and goodbye is means a lot to me. And so. thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we really Thank appreciate you. having it. It was a pleasure for us. Thanks for. I hope we see you again that's sometime. Right. That's it. I mean, that's that's an endearing thing. It's a so, big deal. It's a big deal. And while you're successful too, I mean, let's also as we as we think about that, you have to everybody that is in any profession, you have to have the right people. And we hear about that it has not been so easy no, to right. get the right people on no, our right. team, whatever our business is. What are some of the things that you've done to be able to have the right people in your restaurants? 
you know, it's it's almost magic. <laughs> it's, for um, for Campbell Place, there is a certain type of server and workers that are right for that place. For Memorial, there's certain types for that place. Campbell is more low key. What happens is, and it's it's just one person talks to another person, a server talks to a, a bartender that they like, and all, and we end up getting the right balance of people for that restaurant. Well, the same thing happens for Memorial. So nobody, nobody, uh, you have to have five years minimum experience to, to be a server at Memorial. So once they come in and they understand what we do, uh, like we have a new a server come in uh, with five years experience and experience us. The, they see uh, us as owners and managers and we have this great feel for it and we feel for our people and we take care of our people. So we're able to say, hey, you, do you know anybody that uh, can, can serve? And boom, that's how it happens because you take care of your people, they'll take care of you. And that's, and so they want, a, they'll only hire, they'll only bring in a friend of theirs if they know that they're good and, and um, they know that the owners are going to take care of them. So it kind of works its own magic that way. Well, we've got about five, six minutes or so, seven maybe. Jonathan, what else do you want people to know about your restaurants? We're with Jonathan Levine. The restaurants are Jonathan's The Rub, Memorial Green. Campbell Place right here in Houston, Texas. You might be listing outside of Houston and you're going to be on a business trip and you haven't been to Jonathan's. Mm. It's a real treat, Jonathan. So you have a lot of people traveling on business that are dropping in. Yeah, well, well, the, the interesting part and the unique part about the restaurant, besides all we've talked about, is, is how um, many diverse um, entree items and, and appetizers and side dishes – and desserts that are available. And uh, what we try to do is, like a typical example is, we have a four top come in, four people come in and they're looking at the menu. And so one person, oh, they feel like having a steak. Well, we have prime certified Angus beef steaks. So they can have a steak. Another person wants to come in and have an Italian seafood dish. Well, we have Chiapino, which is, quite honestly, my favorite dish. And it's got clams, mussels, scallops, and shrimp in mm. this slightly spicy uh, fish stock with enhanced with tomatoes and a pasta and, 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 and. And it's just a beautiful dish. Originated in San Francisco, but we've adopted it as a New York dish and, and brought it to you. Sounds and, tremendous. So, the, so one person could have steak. One person has ca- chiapino. Another... Um, Person comes in, they want light bites, so they'll have one of our salads. We have 12, 13 salads, and anything they want, they could have. Could I have a salad this way, that way? Of course, of course. We don't say no. So, so now you got steak, you got chiapino, you got a salad, and then somebody wants to just have uh, crab cakes. So you have this table of four people ordering exactly what they want. Instead of being pigeonholed, you're in a steakhouse, what steak are you going to have? Or, you know, then they also have the chicken dish or some. We have such an extensive menu that they could have fun picking out exactly what they want and um, having an experience with it. So um, that's one thing that's kind of unique. Other, other, you know, restaurants do that, but not to the extent where that we do it, I don't believe. Uh, and our side dishes, how many times you go to a place and the side dishes are like an afterthought? Uh, they'll throw on button mushrooms, uh, or the, the, you know, open the can, heat it up. Even good restaurants do that, I hate to tell you. We'll buy fresh mushrooms, we clean them, saute them, whatever we, how we want to finish them, boom. it's. We have, uh, we have grits that are real, like polenta grits, cheesy, creamy grits, made every day, garlic mashed potatoes made every day, caramelized carrots made every day, all and on and on, cauliflower, broccoli. But, but we care about the sides as much as we care about the main entrees. So it's not like 
It's an afterthought. It's it's a thought. Everything, every dish you take seriously in the construction, the flavor profile, presentation, mm-hmm. and consistency. Well, you said it better than I did. Yeah. Well, like, thank, thank you. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm applying You're for the job. <laughs> I don't know if I would pass You're doing the mustard. Good, huh? So, yeah. real quick, let's tell people there are a lot of people like me. Sometimes we don't go out to eat or bring people in, but I want to grill in my backyard. And let's say I want to grill either a steak, and in my case, I'll, I'll first go to the New York Strip, or I want to grill some seafood. Give us a grilling tip or two for the people that are cooking at home. It's, uh, or do you ever cook at home? Do you have a grill? I, I, I don't do much yeah. eating at home. With, okay. Not, I, I go home and I sleep. Grilling at, at home would be just like we, we uh, char grill at the restaurant. So you, I, the way I look at it is there's lots of ways to do it. You could do a reverse sear where you put it in an oven at 220 degrees for like a, for like a steak, steak, right? Yeah, for the steak, right? So, so you bake reverse, it a little bit. You bake it, then finish it. Or you do it the other way around where you, you grill it and get some nice char on the outside and finish it in the oven. You know, I can't I can't see just leaving it on the char grill till it's done because you're going to have too many gradations of color. When you, when you do like a reverse sear or you do a, a regular sear, what you're going to get when you cut in is that uniform color top to bottom. You don't see the gradations of brown and then, okay, you want a medium rare, there's a little piece of medium rare. And then, so the ob- object of the game to me to get a beautiful steak that tastes good, if you want medium rare, you want medium rare from top to bottom. So that's the object of the game. It's not that easy if you're just putting it on the grill unless you manage your grill with two different temperatures. You have a high setting, low setting, and then you got to, you know, know right. what you're doing. So that's that might be the key. That sounds like I've not done that. That's something I would try. What about seafood? A quick word on seafood. Um, Cooking seafood at home, whether it's on the grill or whatever. Well, see, seafood to me is... Um, it's uh, either sautéed or pan seared. I'm not a. I'm not into charring, uh, although it we do it some because uh, locally it's a deal. But I, I would I would rather have a um, a pan seared uh, piece of snapper or uh, redfish or or uh, scallops or shrimp that are uniformly browned on both sides. So you get your caramelization. The scallops, boy, that sounds yeah, good. Scallops. Mm. Are, um, scallops are my thing. So we get fresh scallops. They're called U8s. They're so eight to the pound, and we get them out of New Hampshire water. So it's serious. Jonathan, thanks for being with us. I am super hungry now. People may have already too. pulled in. <laughs> they may have pulled into your, one of your locations. That's awesome. If, they, if you didn't do it today, go to Jonathan's The Rub Memorial Green, Campbell Place, as soon as you can, the month of August, you, you also have the opportunity to help those in the Ukraine. Jonathan, thanks for being on the show. Let's tell them the website again. It's jonathansderub.com, jonathansderub.com. And uh, we are at 12505 Memorial, and we're at uh, 9090 uh, Katy Freeway by Campbell. Thanks for being on the show, ladies and thanks gentlemen. So Jonathan Levine. It's jonathansderub.com.